at bbc.co.uk. It's 21 minutes to six, so you've got about ooh, 19 minutes to do that. Uh, now, schools across the South are preparing for a limited reopening next week. Some, but not all, will accept reception year one and year six aged pupils. For parents, there are dilemmas, with many saying they won't send their children even if their school can take them back. And head teachers have to compl- completely rethink how classes can safely reopen. Head teacher of the Prince of Wales School in Dorchester, Gary Spracklin, joins me now on the line. Hi, Gary. Good afternoon. Now, Gary, um, a lot of preparation going on, I know, for the reopening on Monday. What's changed at the Prince of Wales? Uh, well, we're seeing it as a process of emerging from lockdown because we've been open as a school since February the 24th each day. Um, and we, for the last nine weeks, we've been providing provision for key worker children. Um, and being very close to the hospital here in Dorchester, we've got a large number of our parents that work on the very front line against COVID. But as we look towards next week and opening for more children, we've had to start thinking about how we can reconfigure spaces, um, move furniture around. So, for example, our library, um, which has only recently been refurbished, has, uh, is now being removed. And we're installing a temporary classroom space there. Uh, we're turning our staff room into a classroom um, and we're following the government guidelines to ensure that um, we, where possible, keep the children as safe as we can. And will you be having a sort of rolling break system? I've seen all sorts of things uh, across the continent, you know, little circles that the children can play in, which looked a bit lonely, I have to say. So we're really fortunate here at the Prince of Wales School that we've got the most beautiful school grounds and we've got a large amount of outdoor space. So we're able to assign um, different areas for different children. Um, We're adopting an approach where we're seeking to keep the children in groups or bubbles, um, which many schools are are using that terminology. We're actually using the term kingdoms here uh, because we're having a child focused approach on it. So we're telling each child that they're going to be a member of a kingdom. And that kingdom of 15 children uh, will not go to another kingdom of 15 children until it's safe to do so. And we're going to use technology to interact between kingdoms. Um, Ever since we've gone into lockdown, we've operated a full virtual school program. So we continue to do daily assemblies. So those will continue when we're back so that those children that are in their different kingdoms can watch. And also those that are still in their kingdom at home, um, they can join in as well. So we're, we're seeking an approach that's very much child focused. I love it. It's so imaginative. Uh, And how many pupils are you expecting to come back in on top of the key worker children that you've uh, already been catering for? So we're approximately going to have another um, 90 children join us um, next Monday. Um, At the moment, it's around 80 to 90% of the children will be coming back into the year groups that are open. We've got an on-site preschool here as well. So for us, it's preschool, reception and year one children. Uh, Because we're a first school, we don't have a year six. And unfortunately, the current government guidelines doesn't take... uh, The current government guidance does not take account for the three-tier system in Dorchester. Mm. Um, So those children that are leaving us in year four... Um, they're not being given the same transition opportunities that year six children are being given in a primary school. And that's something that we're seeking to um, adjust as quickly as possible. And we've written to our local MP about that matter. Oh, I, I had just, it had just occurred to me, that's a terrible omission really, isn't it? Um, because yeah, it's... it seems really unfair because if the focus is on year six children coming back for transition, it's the same for year four children mm-hmm. and year eight children in a middle school model. So here in Dorchester, the three middle schools will be open next week for year six children, but their year eights won't be able to come back in. Um, so that's something that hopefully will change in the coming weeks. Obviously, we want it to be done in a way that's safe for the children to do so. Uh, but my argument would be if it's safe for year six and it's safe for year four. Absolutely. And each school should surely be able to, to make that provision for their leavers, I would have thought. Yeah, well, what do we, we know? In the coming weeks, we'll see. I'm sure things will change. If we ruled the world, Gary, things would look so different. Um, <laughs> um, Critically, just... for us, we're giving parents the choice. And that's, that's a really key point. We've adopted a your child, your choice approach. We're not um, encouraging or forcing any parents to send their children back in. We're being really honest and transparent. We've put lots of photos and videos out showing what the space is going to look like we've shared we've been very open with our planning we've shared our risk assessments and our detailed plans with our parents and said this is exactly what it's going to look like we've taken all reasonable steps and it's your choice if you send your child in and your staff are all happy that uh, they are safe as safe as they can be yeah that, that's right and we've been working for nine weeks now open as a school with key workers and all of our staff that are not shielding or super shielding for various reasons um, have been in um, and working alongside key worker children so they already know uh, what it's going to be like 
because we've been operating in that way for nine or ten weeks already. Now, once you've got staff in school, you've still got the online learning for the children who aren't in school. Have you got enough personnel to cover all of that? Well, our staff that have been super shielding at home have been absolutely amazing and sometimes they're the forgotten stars uh, because although they, they're at home, they're still working hard and they've been supporting me over the last nine weeks by making uh, weekly phone calls home, uh, by interacting via instant messaging and video calls with, with children. So we've been making the use of technology and there's no reason why that won't continue in the coming weeks. Now, Gary, I know you've got uh, children yourself. Are any of those due to return to school on Monday? That's right. All three of my children are due to return on Monday. So uh, we, we're going through those conversations at home about what it's going to be like and the routines that we need to follow. Um, and they're excited to be going back. Oh, so they all will be. I mean, I was listening or watching a, an interview around the Prince and uh, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge talking about Prince George and Princess Charlotte. I think Charlotte's in reception and George is in year two. So she should be going back and he doesn't get the opportunity to. So they're going to keep both the children at home to make it a more equal experience. Yeah, and um, some of our parents have made that choice as well. In my personal um, circumstances, that but both me and my wife are key workers, so they're going to key work at school. But um, for some families, that's a real tough decision if one is going and one can't access the provision. Um, and some of our families have made that choice that it would be best to keep them both at home. And look, we totally understand that and we will support all families with, with their decision. Um, and for us, we will continue to do what we've been doing over the last nine to ten weeks, which is provide lots of support, lots of online content. We've been doing physical resource packs. It's not just about the online content. Each week we've been sending our families parcels. We've sent them chalk and watercolour paints. Um, this week they're, they're, they're receiving... Oh, I won't tell you because that's that important <laughs> for them, won't it? Is it too late for me to repeat year one myself? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're always well. You know, we're always open here and we're always keen to share what we're doing. Well, it sounds lovely. I wish you well with it and uh, do let us know how you get on. It'd be nice to speak on the other side. That's Gary Spracklin, head teacher of the Prince of Wales School in Dorchester. The children returning on Monday. <laughs> Let's take a look now at the stories making the headlines today and how 